On Christmas Day of 2021, the James Webb Space Telescope was shot into space. And while most of us were cheering, the launch was um, one of the most terrifying days of my life. <laughs> Um, putting a $10 billion spacecraft that we'd been building for 20 years on top of a rocket and then lighting the rocket and, and pushing it into space was quite terrifying. It was so big that it had to be folded up to be launched and then unfolded in space over months. The famous Hubble Space Telescope was placed just outside our atmosphere to cut through the visual noise. But JWST is way further out than Hubble and it also sees way further. And it's different. Hubble is a, a basically an optical telescope. So it sees light like we see with our own eyes. It sees visible light um, into the ultraviolet and also a little bit into the infrared. Whereas the James Webb Space Telescope is an infrared telescope. At first glance, JWST has a much higher resolution than Hubble. And in some ways, that's the case. However... It's like reading one chapter of the book if you only use one wavelength of light. So actually having the complementary nature of Hubble and the James Webb telescope, radio telescopes and um, X-ray facilities, these all actually give us a, a more comprehensive picture of what's going on. JWST has the ability to see through objects that visible light would obscure, a little like an object that we know well on Earth. It's like putting on night vision goggles. You can see right through it. We now have access into inside of these objects to see how stars are being born, um, what processes are causing them to, to become stars. Now, JWST's primary mission was to see further back in time than an optical telescope could ever see. And damned if during the year of the Olympics, they didn't break a record for finding the earliest galaxy ever detected. Um, so we have our gold medalist for this year uh, is at a redshift of 14, which means it's a galaxy that was 290 million years old after the Big Bang. It's called Jade's GS Z14. But that's far from all that it's seen. Some of the fun things that have come out of the science from JWST in the first two years are um, not only are we finding very distant galaxies, but there's a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there's a lot more galaxies in the early universe than we expected, and they're bigger than we expected. At least they look bigger than what we expected. The other primary mission for JWST was to look for little green men. Well, not really. We're also on the hunt for exoplanets, um, studying, trying to find Earth 2.0. Um, everybody wants to know if there's another world like our own. And of the over 5,000 known planets to date, outside of our solar system. Um, a handful of those are what we call terrestrial planets, and we're trying to study their atmospheres. First to see if they have an atmosphere, but then also to try to see what's in their atmospheres. One of the discoveries early on was a planet with an atmosphere that could contain dimethyl sulfide. When you find it on Earth, it almost always requires some form of organic life. But before you go look into the skies for ET... It's a very, very, very weak signal. The noise is very, very high, which is why they didn't claim it as an actual detection. They said that this is potentially something that could be there. Now, whether or not this specific planet has this specific compound really isn't the point. It's the fact that we now have the ability to look for this signature all throughout the universe. We can look for the fingerprints of water, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane, all of these gases that we know are kind of the organic composition in our atmosphere. Now, Stephanie told me one of the most exciting discoveries in her opinion is that we found water on asteroids in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. It could have massive implications, not only for Earth and our solar system, but well beyond. But it's what's down the pike after JWST that may really help us find an Earth-like planet. It's called the Habitable Worlds Observatory because it's gonna enable us to look at planets Earth-like planets around sun-like stars. And that's gonna give us a whole nother level of detail on finding Earth 2.0. For Central Oregon Daily News, I'm space geek Scott Elness.